Welcome to Tundra Trash, where I work on all of my trash. Oh look! Ford! I'm just kidding, baby. I didn't mean it. What? No, I haven't forgotten about you. I've got a soft spot for the blue opal. But I mean, how could you not when they sound like this? 460 cubic inches of Detroit steel. Pulled it out of an 85 E350 camper after tearing the camper down and burning it. Turns out the easiest way to remove an engine from a camper is to just roll the cab off of it. I've been holding off for years on putting any horsepower into this engine because the truck's still sitting on half-ton axles. Now I've got bigger axles. Uh, they're under there, I, I, I promise. And bigger tires. Now I'm finally able to pursue my lifelong dream of romping around in a big block Ford, uncorked. And this crap is finally in the scrap pile where it belongs. And in its place, I got an Edelbrock Performer RPM, an Edelbrock 750 double pumper, some derby headers, and a GM distributor. Don't get too sore, guys, but the stock Ford distributors, especially the ones with points, they stink. Ah, oh, man, I do not want to file points. These HEI distributors, I need one wire, hook them up, they're good to go. And you know that annoying thing when you've been mudding and your engine's all hot and then you shut her down, you go and get yourself a cold beverage and you come back and it don't want to start back up. This fixes that. This distributor has the Chevy HEI style cap, but it's a Ford billet aluminum distributor shaft so that it fits obviously on big block Fords. Another area where Chevrolet clearly had Ford beef was on their power steering pumps. Because I got this engine out of a van, it actually had this Saginaw Chevrolet GM style power steering pump on it already. Look at that, two belts too. The last Ford accessory that I'm looking to get rid of is this alternator. There's nothing inherently wrong with the Ford alternator, but it does require that you use their regulator box. I don't want all that crap. So I'm putting a Chevrolet alternator, a one wire on it. That's going to be a problem. Oh boy! This is going to be like way easier than I thought. After digging through some of my fabricating bits and bobs, I found what it might be the perfect spacer. I've just got to shift that bushing over just a little bit. Look at that. And for the bottom, this nut ended up being about the perfect spacing. It 
there you go. Nut welded onto the original bracket, no spacer, slightly smaller bolt. Bottom bracket just worked as is, just needed that nut in there as a spacer. Look at that belt alignment. Good enough for a belt, right? I had to play with the timing a little bit to get it to fire up, but that alternator is working great. The engine's running great now. Almost ready to go back in Black Betty. Chevy accessories, a Ford motor. So which is it? Am I a Ford or a Chevy guy? Yes.